This court is again in session. Please be seated. We are back on the record in case number DV10-01877, McDowell versus McDowell. The record will reflect that counsel and the parties are present in court. Sir, I remind you you're under oath. Counsel. Your Honor, I spoke uh, with Ms. Luna about this over the break and I wanted to let you know. Um, my client had uh, hours and hours worth of dental work two days ago and he, ha he has to have something between his teeth and his gum. So if it looks like he's eating, he's not. He has a product in there that's helping with that. All right, thank you for that. Are you ready? Yes, go ahead. Uh, Mr. McDowell, I'm gonna have you look at uh, your Exhibit H. It's really the double H is what it is. And I apologize for you on a swap that was back and forth. Two H's? It's the second H, yes. Ooh. It's going to be in the very back. Okay. Okay. This exhibit is the joint account owned by you and Mrs. McDowell at the time that you got the $100,000, correct? Correct. Okay. And uh, this particular exhibit has got statements in it up to about, and I think if you look at the very last one, uh, December to 20th of 2007. And that's a uh, number, it helps you, number 48. Yes. Okay. Was this the only account that you and Mrs. McDowell had during this time? Uh, the only account that we jointly had, yes. Okay. And would this account reflect from the point that the hundred thousand dollars was deposited to where it was spent to this last statement yeah the yes it was it wasn't completely spent but yes i know what you mean right. so in other words what's reflected in this account in terms of debit card and check transactions is reflective of how that hundred thousand dollars was spent over at least this period of time yes with the exception of any transfers that may have occurred to any other accounts i was not on okay but those transfers will be reflected in these statements. Should be, yes. Okay. Will you look at uh, number 48, and can you tell this court, um, and actually it's number 47, Mr. McDowell, can you tell this court what your balance was on 12-20 of 2007? 29,130.43. Okay. And so that was the remainder of what was left in this account following that $100,000 being placed in it. As of December 20th, yes. Okay. And this account also had uh, payroll going into it for you, is that correct? From my uh, UPS, yes. Okay, so there, were, there would be additional deposits that may have added to this balance besides that $100,000. Yeah, there was my music deposits and my payroll from UPS, as well as I believe I may, I don't know if I started at HSI, I'd have to look specifically, but I might have been paid by HSI too. But you agree that those things would be reflected? Yeah, they would have gone into this account. And would you also um, agree that you had access to these statements during 2007 and would have been able to view what was coming and going from these accounts? I should have, yes. I should have. Okay. But they went to the, they went to the Park Place address. Um, so... Again, you know, point of contention, but I should have, yeah. All okay. right, but your name's on the account. Right. You're an account holder. Yes. Okay. And so, as we stated earlier about this account, you, your, my understanding is from you that some of these expenses were business, and you are now agreeing that some of them would have been community expenses for living. Uh, yes. Okay. Your mortgage payment came out of here for a while, correct? The full time. Okay. You pay, made some credit card payments, both you and Mrs. McDowell, off this account. I don't recall having a credit card. Okay. If there are credit cards, transaction payments reflected on here, you wouldn't disagree with them, right? Right. Okay. Right. Um, and if there are also transactions reflecting uh, purchases such as Rayleigh's or at Chevron, you don't disagree with those? Either. No, you're right. Okay. Is there anything within these records and you're having reviewed them with your attorney and having reviewed them over this case that you disagree with having come out of this account? You mean that, that it's not yeah, factually you just, correct? 
dispute is not being accurate for what came out of the account. Uh, Maybe let me react. No, I understand your question. I understand you, your question. You agree um, that this is a true and Can I take a second? To, as I, far as you know, what came in and out of this account. Oh, I'm sorry. What I'm asking is, do you agree that the transactions in and out of this account are true as they are reflected on this? Uh, yes. Do you dispute any of these? Okay. Yeah. And so if the court reviewed this, they would be able to see how this money was spent, at least for this period of time, up to December 20th, 2007. No, I don't think the court would know how this money was spent. I think the no court would know the money was spent, but I don't, I didn't, these, none of this is itemized as to what the money was spent for purpose-wise. Like, if it says four hundred and thirty dollars um, check card purchase, I again I ran out of dough. I didn't have the resources, but on that particular one, I happen to know that was for a, a, a commercial size mixer for the group home. So I, ha you know, there's only a limited number of checks I can order to to verify what specifically. But but I won't dispute that if there was a Rayleigh's grocery receipt. Um, that, that was probably for our food, for our family, while the business, again, while the business generated an income, which it did not do. I was told the business had no income during this entire time. I found out later that was a lie, that there was income. So I did, I agree that the money was spent, but the only ones I can actually tell you were spent on me or my, you know, the kids, like, you know, groceries or if I had to buy, a, like, dental copay or something. I can't tell that on all these. I okay. just, it just is too vague. It just says, you know, point of purchase or point of sale, and I don't know. Fair enough. Were you and Mrs. McDowell living together during this period of time? Yes. Of course. Your Honor, can I just ask her to clarify when she says during this period of time, do you mean the time during the well state? Yeah, that's what I mean. And Mr. McDowell, just to yes. clarify, did you understand that? Mm -hmm. I want to talk about your income a little bit. Let's move forward to that. Let's take a look at your financial declaration, if we can, which is at Exhibit 2 in my book. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I think your attorney also has it, but he's But this is the financial declaration that you filed in January on January 24th of 2011, correct? Yes. Are you still requesting alimony from this court? Yes. Okay. So, and this particular financial declaration is the only financial declaration you filed in this case. You haven't filed an updated one since this date. No. No. Okay. And on this particular financial declaration, you note on the first page that you're that you were employed by UPS for ten years and going places, correct? UPS for ten years. I said that. Uh, if you'll look on page one of uh, Exhibit Two. Exhibit one, what? Exhibit two, page one. Okay, going. Yeah, that's ten years at UPS is inaccurate. I've How many only been years four been years. At well, at the time it was three years. At the time it was three years. Yeah. So, and then you were also employed at going places. Yes. And yesterday, my understanding from the testimony is that you also you're a musician and you play with bands. Yes. It's, and what's the name of that company that you're employed with? Um, it's I'm actually in a band. Um, so the name of the band is Emerald City. Emerald City. Yeah. Okay. And so, did you reflect that employment on this particular page of page one on your financial? Document? I was not working at it with Emerald City at the time. Okay. But you haven't updated this, so that income with that band would not be reflected on page two for your average gross monthly income, would it? No, it shouldn't be. Okay. Um, and also, in addition to that, my understanding is yesterday, if you look down on uh, line twenty-one of this page, you said you have four hundred dollars as other sources of income from. Your Nine twenty-one. Yes. And that that my understanding is that number has now changed. You're getting two hundred dollars from your daughter. Yes. 
and you are about to start getting three hundred dollars from your son. Cross our fingers. Cross your fingers. Yeah. <laughs> that's in addition to they're also paying a portion of the utilities, right? And Bill. is that portion of the utilities reflected anywhere that they're paying on your financial declaration? It was built into their rent amount, but yeah. Okay, so do they pay you two hundred dollars plus utilities? No, they they give me the rent and um that's sort of inclusive. Did okay. you pay their own? I don't know if you call a phone. Is phone, cell phone a utility or what? But they pay for their own phone. But they don't pay anything on the electricity. Well, I take some, I mean, you know, I, I kick into consideration out of the rent they pay. Okay, so, so. Do, they, do you only get the $200 check or do you get... Yeah, I get a $200 check. And it's, well, I haven't gotten any $300 checks, but yeah, I know what you mean. Okay. You're not getting extra money towards the utilities? No. Past that $200 no. or past that $300? Okay. No, they're just paying for what they consume, correct? Yeah. Let me ask you, as far as the band that you're in, how many times <laughs> per month do you work with that band? Once. Once. Once well, you, I mean, I don't work the same amount every month, so I can't say I work X amount every month because that's not how long have you been works. with the Emerald City Band? Uh, we've been playing professionally for a year and a half, two years. year and a half, two years. Yeah. Over the last year, how many times did you play with the Emerald City Band? Um, about once a month, on average, sometimes twice, sometimes nothing for three months. What would you say if you so had I'm to averaging say that. how many times for the year? Okay, let's see. Pep. Bummers. Summer club every three months. So, seven? Seven times, eight times, but that doesn't mean I've only played eight times. When I say I played it, I play it. Usually, it's a two-day gig. It's Friday and Saturday. So, do you want me to count each day as a play day or uh, yes, or so a you gig? Yes. You were paid for. You're paid a hundred dollars a day, correct? Right. That's what you mean. Yes. So how many times? Okay. So that would be that seven times two. Add one for Silver Legacy, fourteen, fifteen. Fifteen times last year. Yeah. Okay. So that's an additional fifteen hundred dollars for the year for your income, right? Or, yeah. or a little over $100 a month. Yeah. Okay. And you would agree that should be added on to your income as well on your financial declaration? Um, yeah. Okay. Have you? Let me ask you, have you ever played with the John Dawson band? Very recently I got hired to play with the John Dawson band. Okay. And how often do you play with the John Dawson band? Very infrequently. Very I've played, infrequently. How yeah. many times in 2012 have you played with the John Dawson band? Twice. Twice. And and what do you get paid when you play for the John Dawson? It's the same. It's always the same. A hundred dollars. Yeah. So that would be an extra for this year. You make two hundred dollars with the John Dawson band. Yeah. Okay. Let me ask you. Do you also have a sound sound studio in your home? No. You don't. You never put in any kind of sound studio in. I didn't say place. I never put one in. I said I do not have one. You do not have. One. No, I do not. Have you ever done any recording with either of these bands? Nope. You ever written any music for either of these? Nope. Bands? Do you get paid to practice with them? No. <laughs> Although I'll submit that as a suggestion to them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you might should. Let me ask you, the John Dawson band, are you aware that you're listed on Facebook as a member of that band? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you don't disagree with that statement? No, I, yeah, I put myself, I like it. I, okay. the, he put me, you know, like the band. Let me ask you, are you aware that the John Dawson band in February, they played on the 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 11th, and 25th? But I also have subs. I have a guy named Alan Zucker who subs for me when I'm double booked. Okay, so your testimony is still within 2012. You've only played two two of these. Two well, I played of, New Year's Eve. Yeah, I played New Year's Eve with John Dawson. I played. I did not play Boomers. I did not play. I played the Nugget. So that, and I'm counting that as a gig. When you said the Nugget, that was a four night show, wasn't it? Yeah. So you would have made four hundred dollars for that particular. No, I did not make four dollars for that. Make I made less. For that one? I made less than that. What'd you make? I think I made three twenty. Three twenty. Okay, I count. So I count it as a gig, but yeah. In, in addition to my understanding from earlier, was that you only made two hundred dollars from John Dawson, and now you're telling me you made three fifty on the Fortnite gig at, at John. Yeah, Dawson. I'll clarify it. That one, yeah. There's when I say I'm playing a gig to me again, I that means a show. Okay. So, are you if I confuse the two, I'm them, sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't interrupt you. Are you yeah. scheduled to play with them in April at the Nugget? I can check. Do you know sitting here today? I don't know if I'm getting a sub or not. I don't. I'm double booked okay. a lot, so I'd have to look at my calendar. Okay, 
Are you aware that they're playing four nights at the Nugget in April? It would be on my calendar if I'm doing it or if I'm not doing it. It would still be on my calendar. Okay. But it would just say sub. Is there any other income that you make that is not listed on your financial declaration? No. Okay. And if you look at page three of your financial declaration, uh, Mr. McDowell, those are your expenses. I just want to clarify that these expenses are true and accurate and that you believe this, this is a fair representation of your current expenses. Now my expenses have gone up, but my also my pay has gone down. So my my pay for my employment has been reduced. Okay, so, so I don't. You didn't you ask about that. This financial declaration. A little bit. Yeah, little it's an old. One. It's an older one. All right, but you didn't refile a new one for this court, did you? I don't believe so. Okay, this is the only financial declaration that I have to rely on here today as to your expenses and your income. Right, which I'm answering your questions. Yes. Um, and it's Exhibit 12C in my book. And do you recognize this particular document? So I'm trying to figure out C. Hold on. Okay, first independent? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, I recognize it as a first independent bank statement, yes. Okay, and is this your bank statement? Yes. And do you believe it's a true and accurate copy of your bank statement for the month of April? Yes. And let me ask April you, when? Hold on. What year is it? Okay, of 2011, yes. 2011, correct. Right. Okay. Your Honor, I would move to admit at least this portion of Exhibit 12 into evidence. And Mr. McDowell, when you look at this particular statement, if you Just a moment. How many pages, Ms. Linda? Um, it's 121, 122, 123, 124, and 125. It is uh, four pages. All right. Pages, base number 121 through 125 will be admitted. It would be the entirety of 12C. Thank you. That so, makes I guess sense. that would have been a simple way to tell you. <clears throat> uh, Mr. McDowell, when you look at this particular exhibit and when you look down on that first page and it says 47 debits, what is the, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, nine credits, $3,236.15 for that month, correct? Yes. Okay, and that's showing income, incoming deposits to you, right? Yes. Okay, including payroll. Right. <coughs> Are you asking me to look at the deposits or? I'm asking you if it includes payroll. Yeah. So, do you think that you had income that month in the amount of three thousand two hundred thirty-six dollars? Um. Yeah. Or is that the balance? No, you're right. Nine. What's nine? I don't know what nine credits means, because I'm looking for. Nine credits would be the money credited to your account for the month, right? I don't really know what that means. I wish I did. I, I mean, it could just be a balance. It could just be a balance. You don't think it's what was deposited to your account? Right? I don't see how it could be, unless it was the month I sold. You know, I didn't sell any furniture or anything, but I did sell gear, personal, personal music equipment. I don't know if that would be that month or not. What Just personal music. I have a list of uh, personal music equipment that I. How much did you receive for that equipment? I don't have that in front of me. Was there, that there's been was many that times. Was that equipment during the marriage? No, it was not. But I, I'm looking for. You said credits. I'm looking for the list of nine credits. I believe you're going to look. It's right below, starting with deposits, and there's deposit on 411 for 545. Do you okay. see that? I see a deposit. Which page for it? Same one. 12C, the first page. I see 545 as a deposit. 
I see 375 is a deposit. And you see 427. I see 200 is a deposit. Okay. And below that, do you see where it says other credits? These are my paychecks. Okay. And those are your paychecks? Yeah. I see the paychecks. So if for that month, if those things added up to $3,236.13, that would be the flow of money you had coming into your account on this particular But month. they don't. I don't believe they do. Okay. I mean, I just did a real quick math in my head, and that's not 3000 That's why I wonder what they mean by credits, because that doesn't add up to 3200 bucks. I don't believe. I mean, even if I round up, six. Would it be fair to say that your income thousand. fluctuates from month to month? Slightly, yeah. And, and that would be factored in by how many hours you get at UPS, right? Yeah, depending on the layoffs. It would be factored in on how many times you play for the John Dawson Band mm -hmm. and how many times you play for the Emerald City Band. Yeah, and my pay. And your, from, pay. Yeah. And your pay from your, the group home where you work at. Right, yeah. Okay. They all fluctuate. I don't regret marrying Tanya McDowell, no. Do you regret that the two of you started rooming all together? Yes. And you regret that 2007 loan, correct? Oh, yes. But you would agree that you made all of those decisions to, to participate in those things, right? Under false pretenses. You allege false pretenses, right? Oh, yes. I don't know additional questions right now, Your Honor. <clears throat> Mr. McDowell, would you turn to Defendant's Exhibit 14, please? In there? <clears throat> you testified uh, this, about this a little bit earlier. And what do these two pages represent? The first page, these both pages represent notes taken during the meeting to arrive at the amount for the loan for the business. So these are, are these notes taken during the process of creating what you refer to as a contract? Yeah, that's what they are. And were the, no, were the note taking and the drafting of the contract on the same day? Yes. So was it all sort of part of one transaction? Yes, it was. And whose idea was it to put things in writing and to have signatures? Mine. Why? Because of a past bad experience with Tanya and her cousin and that other business. That that's why we that's why Tanya needed all this money to pay off the past business. The twenty and whatever thousand. When you saw this for the first time in defendant's uh, exhibit book, um, what was your initial reaction? Wow, good magic trick. Last time I saw this was uh, in my nightstand. Um, now I see there's a copy of a crumpled up, only, well, I don't know, this is not it. This is only a portion of it. This isn't even min much of a portion of it. This is one part of a process. You know, you, when we sat down to arrive at an amount to borrow to open up a business, one of the first things that was discussed was, what's it going to take to get our lien off your back legally? Or actually, no, more properly, what is it going to take, Keith, you know, here's what it's going to take to get our lien to stop chasing me legally for what was that amount? well on here it was twenty two thousand and forty three bucks um, it turned out to be more than that but yeah but on this it, it was sort of we were they call that napkin math you know where you okay here's here's the debt owed to the old business that was Tanya's old business so per Rod Carucci if that doesn't get paid any new business that gets started can be attacked by her old people that she worked with they they were coming after her this amount was part of how much is it going to take to start a new business well first thing we have to do is pay off the old business and that to your recollection was in the approximate amount of 20 well 22,000 um, on paper here it's 22,000 I believe it went it was more things came up um, but here when we were planning to come up with an amount to borrow 
this was the amount I was told by Tanya it would take to clean up that past mess for her. And if the entire uh, written materials that, that you and the, the two of you worked on that day mm -hmm. uh, were presented here in court right now, do you think that would be helpful to the court? <laughs> Indeed. Oh yes, that was the actual contract. It was the rent amounts, it was the per diems for the clients that she currently had, um, the minimum per diems, which is, again, a client is defined by services rendered to a person and then billed to Medicaid under a Medicaid number. The minimum amount per client was $2,800 a month per client. At, you say minimum, is there a range? Yeah, it's up to $4,500 a month, depending on the client and what Medicaid approves for billing. So it's a very flexible situation if the client has brain trauma and needs toileting and transportation and living skills and all these other things. Those things get billed out separately by staff who provide them. So if they get provided, up to the limit would be maybe $4,500 for one client, but the minimum would be $2,800 on the contract, which this wasn't really... I mean, it was part of it, you know, but this wasn't part of the contract. This was just part of the math that you do to arrive at the dollar amount as to where the money would get spent. Say, okay, here's the income. Here's the rent amount for the property. Here's how many clients are going to go in the property. There were supposed to be four clients in the property, one staff. Four clients, one staff. Well, four clients, one staff. And then the math goes out 2,800 times four. Tanya, is this right? I'm not going to do this unless we're 50-50. So I want signatures on it. Are we okay? This is exciting. We're starting over. Let's get rid of our lien. And we both signed that. And it, it actually outlined where the money would get spent, how the money would get spent, what, and what the income, most important was, what's the income from this business? What's the business plan? Well, that's all part of the actual there was a one-page summary that said what the income was, what the outgo would go, and how we would realize the payoff of the loan. The full loan was in that contract, that it would get paid off within the first two years. That's how much profit was in that. That's why I did it. Oh, okay, interest only because credit was not good. My credit was not good. So an interest only loan, five years adjustable, which is why I was panicking to get it refied. Um, and mine is the only name on it. She's on the deed. I'm the one on the loan. So that's the that's the page that's missing. The magic page that that got crumpled up with this stuff. There's more than this one too, but there should be a contract here with both of our signatures and a date and a description of the business plan. When did you first? You said that you kept that in your nightstand. Yes, I put it in my nightstand. Did you make copies? No. Uh. -uh. And don't have when a copier anyway. Um. When I was told, I, yeah, when I was told, uh, I forget exactly what the dispute was, but not, not long after the money cleared the bank account, disputes arose. The loan, I, the loan, the $100,000. The $100,000, yeah. The, the, well, it was one hundred and eighty, but yes, it's 100000 100, was the cash out of the loan for the business. Uh, dispute arose. I said, ah, 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 no, let's not fight. Put it in writing so we won't fight. Go to the nightstand. Hey, where is it? I don't know. <laughs> so this is like a really neat, this is great, a bit of nostalgia to see it. At least part of it, anyway. Part of it is here, which leads me to believe when that the rest of it exists somewhere, too. When you noticed that it was missing, yeah. she was present with you in the room? No, uh-uh. But you uh -uh. did ask her about it? Oh, yes. What was her response? Well, I don't trust you. Uh, would you please turn to Exhibit 3 in Defendant's Book? Okay, I'm there. And not the first page that's the spreadsheet, but the next page that says 01 in the bottom right-hand corner? Yes, there's a check. Now. Based on what you were just talking about with that contract in the two pages, what does it say here in the subject, I'm sorry, sorry, the memo line of the check? Personal loan repayment of 25000 Is that the amount that you, or could that be 
the amount that you spoke of earlier to clean up the past business situation. That is specifically what that's for. Okay. Why didn't you, why are you saying something different now from what you said to Ms. Luna? Regarding? I think she asked you if that was for the lease and you said no. Because it was, that's not the lease, that's not for the lease. Okay, but, okay, but you knew what it was for or now you know what it's for that you've gone over the paperwork we just went over? No, I was just trying to keep. I was trying to be concise. So I was trying to say no and yes, but. Okay. So do you think that it was probably for that cleanup of the past business debt? Yeah. Did you see personal loan in this. Exactly. Time? Yeah. And how about on the next page? This is not the amount of yeah. the lease, correct? No. Uh -uh. And the lease is is it is the lease referenced in the memo line? No. Okay. So it what says loan? It says loan put repayment or loan. Well, my goodness, I can't. It says loan for July. So I'm guessing it's shorthand for loan payment for July. Okay. And if you look on both page, pages one and two, that signature on the back, you are confident it's yours. Yeah, that, that's definitely my signature. And when you would sign the check, Tanya. When you would sign endorse the back of the check, would you ever then give it to Tanya to deposit somewhere? Or yes. Or you typically make your own deposit? Well, there was, it, we, it was a joint, we had a joint account. So a lot of the times it was merely a matter of signing the check and it would go in with whatever else was going in. So I couldn't tell you if I went there myself or not. To your knowledge, did Mrs. McDowell ever take an endorsed check and put it in an account other than your joint account? What my knowledge then or my knowledge now? Oh. Then yes, I believe I believe that there is yes I believe that there's very good reason uh, to think that checks were signed and deposited or written for deposit only into accounts other than accounts that I had what I had, had access to yeah. And. Well, it wouldn't be my signature. It would say for deposit only on the back instead of Keith, you know, right. and or, then just a squiggle. Right. Or if you, if you endorsed a check, as you just stated before, you would sometimes endorse right, or that too. Perhaps, please don't interrupt because it's just bad for the record. Um, I'm not trying to be harsh with you. Um, but if you, you, I believe you stated, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that sometimes you would endorse checks and then hand them to her because perhaps she would be going to the bank with those and other checks. Is that an accurate statement? Yes. Okay. Do you know for sure whether the checks made out to you and endorsed by you? Do you know whether all of them went into the joint account? No, I am not. I, it, no. And at that time, did you, Keith McDowell, have any other bank accounts that you used? No. So you are confident that on page one, that is your signature on the back? Yes. And also on page two? Yes. But... Do you have knowledge Not page three. Of, do you have, <coughs> and I agree there could be a piece of paper in one of these books that could confirm it, but based on what you know right now, do you have certainty that these were deposited into the Wells Fargo joint account of you and Tony McDowell? I don't have certainty of that. How about the next page, the signature on 0003? Is that your signature on the back of the joint? That is not my signature. Of course, on the following page, that is not your signature. That's not my signature. On number five, that check is not even made out to you, correct? Right, no. It's to Home Depot. And number six, is that your signature? Nope, not my signature. Number seven? Not my signature. Number eight? That is my signature. Well, yeah. You believe that's your signature? No, no, I don't believe that's my signature because of the, I don't, I can't write like that. <laughs> but it could be, could have been an accidentally pretty signature. Okay. And then, how about on 09? Yeah, that looks more like my scribbling. How about 10? Yes. Yeah, that looks like my signature. statements 
right now from the Wells Fargo joint bank account for this time period, this time period of these checks, which is a time period of December-ish of 08. June 08 through December 31st 08. Do you have any indication from Wells Fargo that these amounts went into the joint bank? No, I do not. I do, do you not. believe that some of them did? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, some of them, but not all of them. follow up a little bit on when you play with your bands. Mm -hmm. Because I got a little bit confused. Are you paid when you when you talk about a gig, that is different <clears throat> from a night, correct? Right, yes, those are two different so terms. Gigs in fact are often multiple nights. Yes. But that scale pay rate that you referenced mm -hmm. of a hundred dollars is a per gig pay rate or a per night per pay rate, night. or does that change? And it changes. It is a per night pay rate. Um, it depends on, there's a lot of factors that go into it. It depends on agent fees, which can be anywhere from 5% to 20%, depending on who's you're working for. If it's, you know, and I'm not going to go into all the details, but that is scalable. The band membership scales the pay. So some bands, some shows will only allow for a four-piece to go do that show. Some shows will allow a five-piece to do the show. Um, some gigs are, like we're doing one this weekend at Boomers, um, it's a one-nighter, but there's no travel pay. Which, If you travel to play music, some venues will pay you to travel, meaning they'll put you up in a hotel, you know, and they give you that travel pay, and they'll feed you. Um, this one is not travel pay. Um, so I'm going to be spending about 35 to $40 on gas just to do the gig. So while I may get paid $100 for the show, I'm only going to get paid $100. I'm going to get paid $60 for the show. So it, it, it's, it's per night, but it's scalable. But this, the fee, the un, it's not a union anymore, but it's called union scale is a buck a night. So for any of the major cabarets, pa Peppermill, uh, not the Sands, they don't do that. Um, and when you say boxer, you mean $100. $100, I'm sorry. Um, $100 a night for Peppermill, Atlantis, um, well, all of the larger ones, like the Silver Club, El Dorado, that's $100 a night per man. Um, and that's what they bid the shows at. So, so if the agent takes 15%, then that's a little less. But. So when you say um, 100 per night, it's an estimate. It yes, goes up and down depending on you know whether you get paid travel yeah. expenses or not, but you're just giving an average figure. Right? That's what your pro yeah, that's what when they call to say can you work, that's what the general promise will be is can you work? Yes, if you're available and then you expect that amount. You know. based on some of the questions that I asked you yesterday. There was, the home was free and clear when you got married. Yes, paid cash. You took out a first loan, I believe, for around 60, is that correct? 80,000 and it was in 2005, yeah. And you're not, that was rolled into the second loan. Yeah. You have agreed that that, it's, it's too, it was spent on various things, it's a wash, you're not seeking that back, correct? Correct. So basically, an additional hundred was taken out. Yes. And so, well, it was one hundred eighty, but the eighty was used to pay off the first. So yes. it was another hundred that went into the business. I want to be clear. Once these, that was in two thousand seven. These proceedings began, and you. Did you become in a situation where you had to refinance? That loan, that debt. Once these proceedings had begun. Yes. Yes. Why? Why did you have to do that? Well, Why I did could, you feel that you had to do that? Um, because it's a variable rate, interest only loan. And so at the time that And that was out, coming due in, in September. It was coming due the September after I filed for divorce. Okay. But prior to that, I had been asking for assistance for, before I filed for divorce to get it. She wouldn't, she wouldn't go on the loan. Who? Tanya would not go on the loan. 
to refi, she refused to go on the loans, but she would not remove herself from the property. And that confused the bank. The bank wouldn't do any deals because they didn't want a loan on a property that they couldn't. That's what I was told. And so back and forth we went until Tanya disappeared and just simply stopped being, there was no communication, no known whereabouts until I was given the house back in October. So yes, after I filed for divorce, I continued to press to get legal assistance, the court's assistance, to do one of two things, either go on the loan, I mean, get you know, go on the loan and if you're going to be on the deed, but she doesn't want to be on the deed of an upside down house, <laughs> right? She but want to be on the deed or she doesn't she, want to be on the loan? She wouldn't be, I'm sorry, she wouldn't be on the loan of an upside down house, but she wanted, she would not remove herself from the deed. So yeah. it was like, I couldn't do either. I couldn't refi and I couldn't. Because as you stated earlier, it started out as interest only. Yes. And it was going to go to an adjustable rate, correct? Yep, at five years. And you testified earlier that as part of the contract, that you had, you had not ever anticipated the loan, the loan was supposed was, to pay back in two years. It was never supposed to go five years. Okay. And that was because of the, business. the projected income from the clients yes. in addition to the lease payments and yes. all of that. So, well, and a job, there, a salary for me too, because if I was on the, on the paperwork, 50, I was 50% owner of that business. I was supposed to draw a salary from that business too. None of that ever happened. None of that ever had. none of it. None of it. Not the rent, not the salary, none of it. <laughs> to date, there's no salary. To date, there has been nothing. I mean, there's no salary for anybody from that business to date. Right? That is not true. There is salary for Tanya. There is salary for her well, her staff. There is salary, salary for... I mean, traceable income, W-2s, things like that. Well, yeah. Okay. The, right. Um, I, I want to be clear that when you refinanced and you did it after the case was filed, and as you will recall, uh, Ms. McDowell, we agreed in court, she signed a quick claim deed just for the purposes of allowing you to complete the refinance. Right. You did not get or take any additional cash out at that time. It was just no. refinancing the existing yeah. stock, correct? Yeah. And for clarification, there were out of there was a lot of out of pocket expenses and additional monies tacked on to the loan. The loan grew, and I had to come up with about sixteen hundred dollars cash for an appraisal and repairs to the home, so that I could get the loan, so I could get the appraisal up high enough. There's a percentage you have to get it at, or they won't refi it. And I had to get it to that point. And you stated that was approximately how much? Sixteen hundred for the for the, the appraisal, and there's a 500, gosh, I wish I remembered all the details, but I think it's like 500 for the, they make you deposit 500 into an account. You have to have money in an account or something like that. So I had to, I had to come up with that money, money for the repair. So when the appraisal came in, they didn't find literally, because this is how I got the house, all the kitchen drawers on top of the counter in parts and all the silverware in little trays, broken windows and you know toilets laying on their side. I didn't want an appraisal to look that way, I had to take all the kitchen drawers to a drawer repair shop. I had to have the toilet at least fixed to the point where it was, you could like, you know, if you wanted to pee or something and flush it, it would work. There was these kinds of considerations. Those were out-of-pocket expenses. I have not brought those up in this court case because, hey, you know? What does that mean? Because, hey. I don't know how it would, well, it was all prior to, um, you know, actually having, uh, a legal plan and you know a lawyer and confidence that I would I would have support a lawyer I couldn't afford a lawyer so until I actually got the, the union to explain and secure you your services I was flying solo and I just needed to get that done and that had all begun in the works and so I didn't include any I should have included all that Ms. Luna? I have three questions. I'll be brief. 
Mr. McDowell, there is no contract anywhere today in any of this evidence showing any agreement between you and Mrs. McDowell, right? Not that I've seen. Okay. And according to you, you never made any copies of it, right? No. It was the original. And do you have any evidence or proof that Mrs. McDowell ever signed and deposited checks made out to you anywhere other than an account with your name on it? I may, yes. I can't you think it, of. Okay? Well. You don't, do you? I may. I may. Give me a minute. And I just want to be clear your testimony is that the home that you never had a sound studio of any kind. No, I never said that. My testimony is that I do not currently have a sound recording studio. Okay. Did you have a sound studio? From the. Yes, up until we turned it into a group home, which was 2007. Yes. And you built that sound studio with community property? Right? No, I built that with my inheritance prior to marrying Mrs. McDowell. Prior to marrying. Okay, so your testimony today is that that sound studio is completely gone? Not yet. My, my testimony today is that there is no sound studio, there is no business being run out of that home today, nor was there from the date of the business loan. Okay. Let me ask you, Mr. McDowell, just so I can clarify. You, your testimony is that, that, that you moved back into Park Place by yourself. When did I testify that? Okay. Did you move back into Park Place by yourself? No. Who moved in with you? My daughter. Did Mrs. McDowell also move in with you? No. You guys never discussed the decision to move back to Park Place together? Well, if a text, by, by yes, yes, there was discussion. The discussion was a one-line text saying, the house is your problem now. Uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah I moved text, back in. Is that text here today is evidence? I, I can, may I ask my counsel if it's producible? It, at this point, if it's not in your child book, it's not. I, it that's what I'm asking my counsel. Is it, I can't, no, look, you want me to look through this? Sir, I'm sorry. Is it's it in this book? book? Okay, then I know it's not. Okay. And I want to clarify, you state that there was a period of time you didn't know where she was at. Mm -hmm. Can you maybe clarify for me what period of time you're referring to? From point A to when you last knew when she was at, to point B where you didn't know where she was at? The period of time leading up to October 4th text. So that would be two months prior to October 4th and, well, after that period. There was no after that. So that's ongoing. So two months prior to October 4th. What's the date? Is that October? No, no September? August? August? Yeah, I would say the end of August, so about a month and a half. Okay. Because four days there for, I would say about a month and a half. Where, and I would like to clarify my answer on this, where we were living, we were living together at 2177 Golden Eagle Park, uh, Park Place, <laughs> Golden Eagle Court, 2177 Golden Eagle Court. By that time, in I believe it was September, she had already moved her personal effects into the ranch property in Washington. That was, that was, that had already happened. She was not living at the condo. What day did you find out about the Rohan Ranch property? I'll find out about which aspect of it. That it existed. That it existed? Yes. I found that out before the summertime. What is that month? I would want to say May-ish, May, June, somewhere like May or like right around the beginning of summertime. Okay, thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Dell. Ms. Mahan, do you have any further witnesses? I do not. And Ms. Luna? You Your Honor, I'd like to call my client, but she's asked if she could go to the restroom real quick, and I think we can be brief, like, five minutes. Five-minute recess. Go ahead. All rise.